Hi everyone, in this video I am going to explain about the concept of attenuators. So what is an attenuator? Attenuator is nothing but it is made up of pure resistors which is used to reduce the amplitude of any particular signal. Whatever may be the signal we are giving, it is used that particular circuit attenuator is used to reduce the amplitude of that signal. We can say it is a opposite action of amplifier. You know already amplifier. Amplifier is nothing but it is used which is used to amplify the input signal. Nothing but if you are giving 1 volt, what is the amplifier? Amplifier that is used to suppose if the input signal is input signal amplitude is 1 volt, output signal amplitude is always greater than 1 volt. It is, it should be greater than 1 volt, like 2 volts, 3 volts or 5 volts. That depends upon the type of amplification we are providing. But in the case of attenuator, attenuator is a resistive circuit. It is used to reduce the amplitude. Suppose if you are giving 1 volt, output is less than 1 volt. That depends upon the construction we have made and the choice of resistors we have done in the case of attenuator okay so attenuator is nothing but a pure resistive network which is used to reduce the amplitude of input signal i will write the definition here attenuators are resistive networks which are used to reduce the amplitude of the input signal. Okay, so attenuators are nothing but which are made up of pure resistors and the purpose of this attenuator is to reduce the amplitude remember that attenuator is to reduce the amplitude okay now let me draw a circuit which is a pure resistive network we can say basic or standard attenuator <coughs> see this is one resistor a second resistor Here we are applying the input voltage Vi and across the second resistor we are taking the output voltage V0. See this is resistor R1 and R2 some current is flowing through this one I. Now by seeing the circuit you may have one idea regarding this as a voltage divider network. A voltage divider network let us take this circuit as first circuit because we have few more circuits are also there because whenever we are using a practical attenuator definitely there will be a problem with the succeeding networks i will tell you okay suppose let us uh, go through in detail about this particular network how can you write the output voltage output voltage v naught is equal to voltage division network voltage divider network how to write the output voltage total input voltage applied into what is the voltage across which we are taking R2 R2 by R1 plus R2 so the output voltage is equal to input voltage multiplied by a factor multiplied by a factor this factor decides the attenuation factor so we can call it as alpha is nothing but attenuation factor attenuation factor we can write it as alpha into VA what do you mean by alpha then alpha is equal to R2 by R1 plus R2 hope you understand a little bit what I am talking about regarding attenuator 
So, V0 is equal to Bi into R2 by R1 plus R2. This factor, additional factor, we have taken it as alpha, alpha into Vi where alpha is nothing but attenuation factor because choosing the values of R1 and R2 decides the amount of attenuation in the signal. Okay, suppose if you are taking R1 and R2 as equal resistors. Okay, assume, assume R1 is equal to R2. R1 is equal to R2. Then what is the value of alpha? Alpha is equal to R2 by R1 plus R2. If these two values are equal, then it will be half. Then what is the output voltage? V0 is equal to Vi into 1 by half. So what happens? We are having, suppose if the input voltage is 100, then output voltage is only 50. So 50% 50 of input voltage will be transferred to the output when we are having equal resistors in an attenuator network. <coughs> okay, so like that depending upon the values of resistors or depending upon this value of attenuation factor, the amount of output voltage is going to be decided. Okay, therefore output is 50% of input voltage. Okay, this is about the basic and standard attenuator circuit. Now, when this circuit is connected at the input of other circuits, suppose when attenuator is connected at the input of any other circuit then what happens the input capacitance of that circuit acts as output capacitance for attenuator. Suppose, let us consider a cascaded networks like attenuator is there and the output of attenuator is connected to another circuit. Okay, let us consider it may be a SEMA circuit. Now, here it is the input we are giving. This is the here is the output of attenuator. At this particular point, a attenuator is completely made up of resistors only. Okay, so let us draw a simple resistor network attenuator. Now, this output is giving to the next succeeding circuit. Now, the input capacitance of this circuit is acting as the output capacitance of this particular attenuator. Okay, there will be some input capacitance here. That capacitance now acting as the output capacitance for this attenuator because the signal which is the signal which is coming from this attenuator must pass through this capacitor and then reaches this circuit. Okay, so whenever we are operating in a practical environment, the attenuator must have a capacitor at the output. So practical attenuator, so practical attenuator must have a capacitor at the output must have a capacitor at the output then what is the circuit now along with those two resistors r1 and r2 now it will be a parallel capacitance will be added across r2 
so this is r2 this is r1 so here it is the input voltage vi hope you understand why we have got this capacitor okay so this is what the output voltage v not the same circuit is a little bit extended with a capacitor this capacitor is not intentionally connected here this capacitor is the virtual capacitance of previous or next coming input capacitances okay uh, wherever you are connecting wherever you are connecting this particular circuit the input capacitance of that circuit acting as the output capacitance of this attenuator so definitely we should add as capacitor whenever we are studying the behavior of the attenuator then what happens see here one resistor is there in the series but whereas in the parallel one resistance and capacitance is there one resistance and one capacitance is there so this type of network is known as uncompensated network uncompensated network because the circuit is not balanced circuit is not balanced okay see in the previous case there when there was no capacitor exactly the input becomes 50 percent or 30 percent or 40 percent and remaining value get definitely transferred to the output without any uh, deviation or without any change of shape of the signal but now what happens because of the existence of capacitance in the output the input signal shape is deviating from the original shape okay that's why this circuit this circuit is known as uncompensated uncompensated attenuator uncompensated attenuator remember this name uncompensated attenuator we have not compensated the network so how to construct a compensated attenuator so additionally we have a capacitor c2 to avoid the problem made by this c2 we need to add one more capacitor across this resistor r1 then the circuit becomes a compensated network or we can say it is a balanced network so to make compensation add capacitor across resistor r1 So here a capacitor R1 is there, here one more capacitor, sorry here a resistor R1 is there and here it is a resistor R2 standard resistor. Now we are having a capacitor which is the input coming from the next stage and it is a compensated capacitor added here, it is C1 okay so this is the place where we are applying the input signal it is the output voltage now this circuit is known as compensated attenuator compensated attenuator hope you understand the names first one was a standard attenuator where there was no capacitor involvement okay a pure resistive network that is the actual circuit we have and we need to say it is an attenuator to make to make it as an attenuator only resistors are sufficient but whenever we are using the attenuator in a practical environment definitely the out the inputs of next coming stages acting as the output of this particular attenuator in such case the capacitance acts as output capacitance and when we are working with that particular capacitance alone definitely that leads to uncompensation oscillations that means the output is not stable for a long period so in order to make that we need to compensate that particular circuit that's why a one more capacitor is coming in parallel with the resistor r1 then one set is there here r1 c1 in parallel and again in series with a r2 c2 
and we are taking the output voltage across the R2C2 combination, this particular network is known as a compensated attenuator. Okay. Now, let us consider a step input is applied for this one. Let a step input is applied. A step input is applied. <coughs> See here, we know the behavior of a step input at exactly t is equal to 0. At exactly t is equal to 0, there is an abrupt change, sudden change in the input signal up to V volts. Later, it is a constant voltage throughout the time period. But when there was no resist, when there was no capacitors in the resist, uh, in the attenuator network, there was no problem. But here we know action of capacitor. Capacitor does not allow any sudden changes. <coughs> capacitor does not allow sudden changes, but it is a sudden change in the input signal. Okay. So see, whenever we are creating any circuit, definitely we should work for the operation of that particular circuit with different different inputs. Okay, what happens and what is the behavior of that particular compensated attenuator for a step input, for a ramp input, for a exponential input like that we should definitely study so that we can understand and analyze the behavior and characteristics of that particular circuit completely. Okay, so now when a step input is considered there is an abrupt change in the input signal. What about the capacitors now? We know capacitors does not allow any sudden changes. Okay, so at initial conditions, who is acting in the circuit and at final conditions, who is acting in the circuit that we should calculate. <coughs> okay, so the, cap the current flows through the circuit. Let us consider the current flowing through the circuit as I. Since the same current flows through the capacitors C1 and C2, we have, we will write here. So, and the initial voltage, initial output voltage is determined by capacitor C. Initially, the output voltage is determined by the capacitors and finally, the output voltage is determined by the resistors. Remember this point. Initial output voltage is determined by capacitors and final output voltage is determined by resistors. Okay. So, charge accumulated in capacitor C1 charge accumulated in C1 is we can write it as that is equal to integral 0 minus 2 0 plus that means exactly at t is equal to 0 I am starting A of t dt we are taking it as Q this is the charge across the capacitor. <coughs> now initial voltage across capacitor C1 initial voltage across capacitor C1 is V1 is equal to Q by C1. V1 voltage across capacitor initially. Initially means we are talking about the periods like I of 0 minus and I of 0 plus exactly at T is equal to 0. What happens at T equal to 0 plus instant? Okay, V1 is equal to Q by C1. And the charge accumulated in capacitor 2 is also same like this one. You can write it as a charge accumulated in C1 and C2. C1 and C2. Now, the initial voltage across initial voltage across C2 is V2 is equal to Q by C2. So, the input signal, input voltage V is divided into two elements V1 and 
V2 because voltage across capacitor plus voltage across capacitor C1 and voltage across capacitor C2 is equal to the input voltage. So that is equal to add these two Q by C1 plus Q by C2 then it becomes Q into C1 plus C2 by C1 C2. Okay. So V or V naught of 0 plus what happens at the output when T is just above 0 plus by V is equal to Q by C2 divided by Q into what is the V? C1 plus C2 by C1 C2 that is equal to Q Q gets cancelled and if you simplify this C1 by C1 plus C2 okay so V naught of 0 plus V naught of 0 plus is the output voltage across capacitor C2 output voltage across capacitor C2 see here see the circuit when we are talking about the instant at 0 plus V naught of 0 plus the capacitor C2 is acting in the circuit see R2 is not there because we have assumed a condition that initial voltage initially the output voltage is measured across the capacitors and finally the output voltage is measured across the resistors. So only C1, C2 is there in the circuit when we are taking V0 of 0 plus C2 is the voltage so Q by C2 is the initial voltage. Okay. So V0 of 0 plus thereby we can write it as therefore V0 of 0 plus is equal to see here V0 of 0 plus is equal to V into C1 by C1 plus C2 V what is V input voltage so I will write it as VI into C1 by C1 plus C2 okay similarly similarly the final value the final voltage can be calculated as V naught of infinity is equal to VI into R2 by R1 plus R2. Okay. So, this is the initial voltage and this is the final voltage. We can take it as 1 and 2. Okay. So, the initial value is determined by the capacitors and the output output final value is determined by the resistors. But see the difference. Initial value is equal, initial value is determined by the capacitors which is equal to VI into C1 by C1 plus C2. C1. But here in the case of resistors it is R2 by R1 plus R2. Uh, see the difference. Remember it. Okay. So, now what happens when a capacitor is uh, sorry, what happens when a step input is applied for this particular network? First case, I will tell three different cases when what happens when a perfect compensation is there, what happens when overcompensation is there and undercompensation is there. For a perfect compensation, For a perfect compensation, we have to consider initial value is equal to final value. That means V naught of 0 plus is equal to V naught of infinity. Okay, if you equate 1 and 2, what happens? R1, um, it comes as R1 C1 is equal to R2 C2. Then you will be having exactly the input signal is just decreased by an amount in the output. <coughs> is the voltage, it is the input voltage or output voltage, this is the V volts and this is reduced by an amount and it is the initial voltage V naught of 0 plus and it is the final voltage V naught of infinity. See here exactly the input is decreased by an amount from at t is equal to 0 to until infinite time duration.
this is what the perfect compensation what we expect from the attenuator okay if this particular condition is true r1 c1 is equal to r2 c2 if this particular resistor and capacitor values make this uh, condition r1 c1 is equal to r2 c2 then definitely this particular compensation can be achieved and the second case is over compensation over compensation where the initial value is initial output voltage is greater than the final output voltage then what happens r1 c1 is greater than r2 c2 then over compensation is there initially we are having maximum voltage but when we are going throughout the time period the output decreases this is the over compensation this is the input voltage now initially we are having maximum voltage and thereby decreasing and stabilizing the output amplitude <coughs> this is what the over compensation see initial value v naught of 0 plus and final value is v naught of infinity here initial value is more and final value is less and third condition is under compensation you, you might have understood how it will be v naught of 0 plus is less than v naught of infinity so r1 c1 will come as uh, less than r2 c2 then what happens this is under compensation initially we will be having low voltage and thereby charging and reaching to the some level so here it is v naught of 0 plus and here it is v naught of infinity final value is always same in all the three cases but initial value initial value changing with different different instance it may be exactly at half or it may be at uh, maximum value or it may be at low value because the initial value is determined by the capacitors and final value is determined by the resistors resistors however will not change their behavior okay it may become uh, half or exactly 30 percent or 70 percent like that it will give the output voltage but the capacitor definitely takes time to charge and discharge that's why this uh, particular problem occurs only at the initial conditions okay hope you understand the concept of attenuators thank you